It's about 26 years of work, but really this title summarizes what I've been doing, and that is to try and optimize exercise primarily for older adults using biomechanical methods. When I talk about optimizing exercise, I'm referring to maximizing the benefits while minimizing the risk and time and effort involved uh, with exercise. In doing that so, it's important that we know and learn about uh, physical demands of different exercise activities. And we do this using biomechanical tools, including force plates, motion capture, EMG, and modeling. Over the years, we have uh, looked at a variety of different exercise activities, including squatting and sit to stand, stair climbing, stepping, lunging. We've even looked at the effects of wearing a weighted vest during activities of daily living in older, in older adults. One of the largest studies, and one funded by the National Center for Complementary and Alternative Medicine, was an intervention development study uh, where we looked at the physical demands associated with yoga and various yoga poses. The idea being that we could develop a biomechanically based yoga program that targeted all the important uh, functional muscle groups while appropriately sequencing the poses or asanas in order to reduce injury. We've also conducted several intervention studies, um, uh, some yoga intervention studies, a weighted vest study in healthy older adults. And in younger adults, we've compared barefoot versus shod running and looked at the effects of upper extremity loading on bone mineral density. As a result of these efforts, I was uh, invited to co-author uh, a paper by the American College of Sports Me Medicine. This was a position stand, which provided guidelines uh, for exercise in older adults. In summary, that paper, we concluded that in order to have a comprehensive exercise program, older adults had to have these different components and that they should be practiced two to three days a week or up to 150 minutes. Um, as I've aged, uh, I've come to uh, appreciate the challenges of meeting these goals, and it's really resulted in a paradigm shift. I'm now looking at ways in which uh, older adults and, and, in fact, all adults can achieve these goals um, using other types of exercise, primarily recreational exercise. Uh, I've learned from my own experiences and from working with a lot of older adults that, uh, that we don't really like exercise, um, but uh, it's more acceptable if we can uh, play and include those, those important exercise uh, attributes during play rather than uh, uh, structured exercise. The current recreational activity we've been looking at now has been golf, um, because golf includes uh, all of the components that we mentioned in that position stand. Additionally, golf has cognitive challenges and uh, psychosocial benefits as well. To date, we've conducted two pilot studies, one a 12-week study in older military male veterans and a 10-week study in healthy male and female non-golfers. And our results have been uh, very positive. We found um, improvements in physical performance with large effect sizes, as well as cognitive function using the NIH cognitive battery. But perhaps most interesting and important of the findings were the fact that we had in both studies over a 90% attendance rate, which is really unheard of in most exercise studies, and no adverse events. We now hope to expand this to uh, clinical populations as well. That's it. Three